I've got the 1200 here out on the bench and as per usual it's in bits. I currently have my machine set up with my 1260 in it but I've got it all out here for a very good reason and that's because another local Amiga enthusiast, Jerry, well he has sent me his 1260. This one because he's having a problem with it. He asked me to test it to see if I can replicate said problem and to see if I can maybe get it sorted for him. But does anyone spot the difference between these two cards? No, it's not the colour of the heat sinks on the CPLDs. Rather, on Jerry's TF1260, he has the full 060 chip. This one has the FPU in it, and Jerry tells me that this is a Rev 6, so very much sought after. Very valuable chip. The only issue seems to be when he's running this in his 1200, it seems to be hideously unstable. Now, my machine is running there. As you can see, it's all came up fine. We can launch, say, sysinfo. Confirming that we've got the 060. No FPU in mine. And we're getting 37,600 dry stones, 39.24. Mips. So let's get my one out of here. We'll put Jerry's one in. And I've dropped my cotton bud. The purpose of this is just to prop up the card here. Just for testing. Because I find I need to have that card sort of horizontal like that. Or I get connectivity issues here on the edge connector. With the trapdoor cover installed, it does lift up the card a bit and everything's fine. But without that cover, this droops too far and it just gives me all sorts of problems. But let's test it. Let's see if it boots. So just a black screen. That's not good. Although it may well be a connectivity issue with the 1260. So just let me give it a wiggle. Now um, we'll try it again, and yeah, that looks a lot better. That flashing there, that is perfectly normal. That's what you'd expect. And there's Workbench. So let's just do that same thing again, shall we? Apps, sysinfo, CPU, 68060, FPU, non-applicable. I was not expecting that. We'll run a quick speed test. And yeah, more or less exactly the same results. But why no FPU? There are a lot of fake chips out there. I really hope this is not one of them because I know how much that these things sell for. Now, I'm not discounting the possibility that it's something funny with the way I have Workbench set up. And in fact, you know what? Just saying that, when I installed my card, I installed the 060 libraries, but a modified version of those libraries for my particular chip, for my LC chip that doesn't have the FPU. So maybe when you're using those libraries, even if your chip does have an FPU, maybe it just doesn't work, maybe it's just disabled. We could boot into Amiga Test Kit. Not that that will actually let us test the CPU per se, but it does report here 68060 Rev 6. So that's certainly correct. And I suppose actually we could boot the sys info from disk as well. And yeah, that looks a lot better. 68060 with the FPU now. And now running the speed test, we also get a result for AM flops. So yeah, 68060, and more than likely then, it is indeed a Rev6, but so far everything just seems to work fine. I suppose one thing we could do is we'll boot back into Amiga Test Kit. And I can run a memory test. 
this card has the 120 in meg on it so this is going to take a while but we'll just let it sit here and run a full memory test and i'm going to leave this going for half an hour well i've actually left it going here for twice that length of time it's been going for an hour and yes it is only on the fourth round i told you this would take a while but so far everything's been fine the chip itself has a nice bit of heat in it but nothing feels out of the ordinary a little bit of heat on those heat sinks as well but again that is to be expected they do run kind of warm on the 1260 but i did also have another chat with jerry who owns this and he tells me that the issue seems to arise when he tries to power cycle this so let's try to power cycle it well looks like it's booting okay that time i just removed the floppy there and yeah let's boot it up into workbench no issues shall we try that again power off and power on let me reattach the keyboard and we'll try a couple of soft resets so keyboard in power up again yep that looks fine and it's back on workbench and no issues so soft reset control amiga amiga yeah it has reset fine and we're back on workbench again so it seems that i cannot replicate the problems that jerry was having because for me his card just seems to work fine I do want to try though and get the FPU working here within my workbench. So we're going to Dopus. Okay, issue sorted. I just downloaded the latest version of the MMU libraries, installed that, and we hopefully now have the FPU working. Yes, there it is still no discernible issues here though it, it all seems to be working fine yep that all looks good i also went and grabbed a copy of witch amiga and this confirms 68060 50 megahertz revision 6 floating point unit 68060 fpu 50 megahertz so yep it all seems fine now we do have the TF tools and we can use this to set the CPU clock frequency and if I can remember how to do this so I think the command is just CPU speed speed equals 100 yep that's us cranked right up everything still seems nice and stable We'll try sysinfo again. And yeah, it's flying. Warping, in fact. How about we get it to run a demo? But I'm going to move you over to direct capture as well. Because yeah, recording that LCD screen is a bit wick, isn't it? So let's try and run this one. Silk cut.
Now I am very conscious that we're running the 060 here with no cooling and she is getting hot. So I'm not going to let this run for too long, although I think we could risk another 30 seconds. Jerry did have this clocked to 100 megahertz himself and he did give me permission to overclock it. So hopefully no issues arise, but not going to leave it too long just because there's no cooling. But yeah, a very impressive looking demo. Certainly shows off what the AGA chipset can do when it's got something like this doing the heavy lifting. And yeah, the heat there is getting a bit much for my liking to be honest with you. So I think that's enough of that. So yeah, nothing wrong with this card or more so that CPU. I have give Jerry the good news in that respect. But it still doesn't really answer the question why it's so intermittent for him. He tells me that he does have the LC chip but he also has another Rev6, lucky boy. And that other Rev6 works fine in here, it's just this one. But the other thing that we were discussing was the timing fixes to the 1200 itself. Now I have done the very basic timing fixes to this machine. It is just removing two capacitors on the underside of the board, but he hasn't done that. And so could that possibly be the source of the instability that he's experiencing? It's about the only thing that I can think of, to be honest with you. But I don't have this 1200 here, so I can't check that. So there isn't really a whole lot else that we can do today. Now, he did say that he's had this for quite a while, and it may be one of the older versions of the firmware on this. So I offered to update the firmware for him. And so we'll finish off by doing that. Programming the CPLDs on the TF1260 or any of these type of cards, it is ridiculously simple. All you need is a Raspberry Pi. Now no doubt you've seen me doing this before, but I have had a few requests to show it again. So here we go. Now, I used the guide that was written by Liv2 over on his GitHub. This is it here. And assuming that you have a Raspberry Pi and that it's all set up, ready to go, all you need to do is run these four commands. This will install the XC3S prog software. It's that which we use to write the JED files to the CPLDs. The wiring, well, Liv2 has provided us this diagram. Although something slightly different here today. Because this is a finished card, normally when I'm building something like this, I'll put the CPLDs on first and then program it before building the rest of it. In that instance, I use the Raspberry Pi to power the card, but this time we're not going to be doing that. And as I say, only because this is a finished card, it has the voltage regulator on here. If we feed 3.3 volts back into that voltage regulator, well, we might risk damaging that. We'll be putting that under stress. So I'm going to disconnect the red wire here, which was the one I was using for power. And in fact, I don't even need this, which is how I usually connect up to my JTAG header. You know, on my card here, for example, I don't have the pins connected there. They are soldered onto this one. Normally all I do is just stick that in there and hold it at an angle and that's enough to let me program. We do need to connect up the other five though. So TMS, ground, TCK, TDO and TDI. Stephen has very kindly written onto the silk screen of all his cards. 
where those signals go on the JTAG header. So just let me wire it up here quickly. And that's us pretty much ready to go. How are we going to power this up? Well, we're just going to turn on the Amiga. Now, I equally have this Pi set up so that I can connect to it remotely over my Wi-Fi here. So just let me open a command prompt. And I'm just going to put this side by side with our guide. We'll connect to the Pi. Browse to that uh, XC3S prog folder. And then we can run the command. Although, bear in mind, there are two CPLDs on here. They are in a chain of positions 0 and 1. We're going to start with 0, the RAM CPLD. And it's that 0 which identifies it. And the file we want is tf1260r1ramtop.jed. So this should just work. And just while we're waiting on that, the program, let me show you where to get the firmware. So tf1260.com, and on this page, it is here. Newest firmware, just click on that link. Or if you're using Chrome like I am, you will need to right click, save link as, download it, and then tell it, yes, you want to keep that. To transfer the files over to the Raspberry Pi, well, you can do that from within Windows as well. I use a bit of software called WinSCP. If you're in any way familiar with FTP clients, well, this should look similar. It's just new session, connect to your Pi. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want to upset the Pi that's currently writing the firmware. But just connect to your Pi. There's the files there on the local PC side. Select the ones you want and just upload. One down, one to go. We'll change that RAM to a bus because we're writing to the bus CPLD this time. And we'll change that zero to a one. And that should be it. So we'll just power cycle the Amiga. It does seem to be booting again, so it looks good. Let's go to our TF Tools drawer. But this time when we try to run CPU speed, let's just run it like this and that will report what the CPU speed it is here. But when we try to run it, device not found. Oh no, what have we done? Well, yeah, you need to update your TF tools at the same time as updating the firmware. I do have the associated updated set of the TF tools here. That's the date of the firmware, by the way. 19th of the 5th, 23. So if your TF1260 is older than that, maybe consider updating it. But if we run CPU speed now, there, working fine. It's found it and it knows it's running at 50 megahertz. So I don't think there's anything else we can really do here. I can't find anything wrong with that CPU or this card. We've updated the CPLDs. I suppose the only thing I can recommend that Jerry tries is the timing fixes to his 1200's motherboard. Although it is a terrible faff to do it, isn't it? You need to strip the whole thing down, get the board out, because it's two components on the underside that you need to remove. Not unless anyone else has any other recommendations as to why this chip is seemingly unstable in his Amiga. It's certainly not something I've been able to replicate, but if you have any other ideas, well, maybe drop them down below into the comments. But that's it for now. I suppose since I have this all apart, I'll go and update my 1260 now. I may as well. But yeah, I think we've done everything we can with this. So, see you next time.